IS has decided you get no more actions, and they don't want warping at all. It's... <laughs> this is a nutty banner. I Let's get into it, because there is a lot to talk about. And the first is this girl, Murr. I, I know Ilya in this Discord is just ecstatic to have her back, and I... This is a far savior. So colorless armored dragon, loving breath. We've got slaying. Uh, uh, we've got DC. Um, if foe initiates combat or foe's HP is above 75% at start of combat, grants attack plus X to unit and inflicts attack minus X. So it's that old spendthrift effect, but it's got a max of 14 now based on the number of allies around you. Um, you have cooldown acceleration. You have <laughs> uh, you have healing. If foe initiates combat or foe's HP is greater than 75% at start of combat, and if unit's res is greater than foe's res, reduces damage from attacks during combat and from area of effect specials by percentage equals difference between stats times four, max of 40%. That AOE is what's really important right now there and i we're, we're gonna look at this unit compared to the buy list but that's the big thing is they have the ncd this unit has aoe reduction um it's kind of a big deal so if foes range equal and then we get adaptive damage of course which is uh, that is not something to, to to turn your nose up at that's really good okay armored beacon so <laughs> we know this armored beacon good defense res scal four good we're not done yet, because uh, you guys know this keeps on scrolling. Canny Fighter. I'm going to not read this and just tell you this is Weaving Fighter that we just saw, but it inflicts attack res instead of attack defense. If you're asking me, I probably prefer defense, but it really depends on the set of units you're going up against. Um, I, yeah, it could be either one is better, uh, depending on who you're up against and Darkling Dragon, because this is what really sets this unit apart. At start of turn, if unit is within two spaces of an ally grants, defense res plus six and warp bubble to unit for one turn. At start of turn, grants defense res plus six and warp bubble to any support partner within two spaces of unit. Or, if unit is not on a team with unit support partner, to ally with highest defense within two spaces of unit for one turn. This is big. If unit is within two spaces of an ally, inflicts special cooldown charge minus one on foe per attack during combat uh, and reduces the percentage of foe's non-special, so we get 50% piercing. And then if the unit is ranged, you get savior because that, that makes sense. Also grants attack, defense, res, plus four during combat. All right, all of that's really good. Like that is an excellent C skill. The warp bubble being handed out to another unit is really critical and this is why. Uh, <laughs> so in Gale Force teams, it is pretty easy to take out one unit that stops warping. It just is. Gale Forcers have been dealing with Gatekeeper and Legendary Mer for a while now. One unit, fine. Two units is tricky. And the reason is generally you have to take out all of those units with your carry. So this is going to encourage more of the hit and run style of Gale Force where you take out a few units, run back, <laughs> run back up to them and take out as many as you can, hoping you get the units that have the warp bubble on them. We're not done. Ephraim's up next. Another armor. This is a near savior, and this unit is probably trying to angle at being Winter Edelgard resistant. So we're, we're going to see this map. Th this one is all about buffing up defenses. We have slaying, we have grants attack defense plus four to allies within three spaces during combat and restores seven HP to those allies after their combat. That is a nice support effect. Uh, if foe initiates combat or foe's HP is greater than 75% at start of combat, inflicts attack defense minus X on foe during combat, X equals number of allies, and that's the <laughs> max of 14, and reduces damage from attacks by 30% excluding area of effect specials and restore seven HP unit after combat. 
If foe initiates combat or foe's HP is greater than 75% at start of combat, when unit special triggers, neutralizes foe's, reduces damage by X percent, uh, which is excellent, so you have piercing as well. All of that's really good, but it, it plays a little better when you see the rest of the kit there. Armored Blaze, we've seen it, it's excellent. Uh, it, <laughs> it's very, very good at taking care of your Edel problems, although not perfect. Earth Boost 3 is nice. That is the Earth or Earth Fire version of the one we've already seen. If I'm rushing, it's because I want to get to Sunlit Bangle D. At start of combat, if unit's HP is greater than 25% and unit initiates combat, foe can counterattack before unit's first attack. This is weird, but there are a lot of places now where you can use these units as <laughs> actually melee nukes right now. That's how good these armors are at this point. So this is that Ephraim effect where it's a, <laughs> you, you force the unit to attack first and then you basically get to attack twice. It works well if you think about charging up your special. It doesn't work well if the other unit can destroy you. <laughs> so, I, I mean, there you have it. But the next part's what's interesting. At start of combat, if unit's HP is greater than 25%, inflicts attack defense minus five on foe, unit attacks twice, and it neutralizes effects that inflict special cooldown charge minus X. So you get that half tempo during combat. And also when unit deals damage to foe during combat, restores seven HP to unit, even if zero damage. There are lots of debuffs in this. this the in combat debuffs are really nice. And I think this is still, this is interesting. I'll have to see this unit in play. Um, I like the pseudo Brave, but I like Brave better, if you know what I mean. Next we have Selena, and honestly for a demote, this isn't a bad unit at all. Uh, we don't get a preference weapon, but this weapon that she has is actually pretty decent. Um, you also get Rally, uh, Rally Up Attack Plus, which is really nice, uh, but we have Devoted Basket Plus. Um, at start of combat, if unit's HP is greater than 25%, deals damage to foe equals X percent of foe's attack as combat begins. So, I said this wasn't bad, but I mean, you caught that, like out of combat damage for this weapon is, that's pretty neat. I mean, that's really great. Uh, deals damage to foe equals X percent of foe's attack as combat begins. If unit has weapon triangle advantage or if unit speed is greater than foe speed, X equals 30, otherwise X equals 15. 30% isn't huge, but I mean, it's, it's very nice. Uh, activates only when unit can attack in combat. Uh, effect that reduce, uh, effects that reduce damage during combat do not apply and will not reduce foe's HP below one. So standard stuff there. Grants attack speed plus five to unit during combat and grants bonus to unit's attack speed during combat equals 15% of unit speed at start of combat. I like this better than the current uh, red tome. Like I, this is, this is pretty good. The only thing is this is player phase only, whereas if you remember, Legendary cams was actually dual phase if it was ranged. Like if a ranged unit attacks into cam, then they still get the pre-combat damage. So anyway, Rally Up Attack Plus is very nice. Attack Speed Catch 3 is commonplace. That weapon though, I that's that is really nice on an inheritable. So we had Warp Bubble in a save skill, and that's not the craziest thing on this banner. This is the craziest thing on this banner. So, Tender Vessel, Accelerate Special Trigger, Cooldown Count, Minus One, Slang. At start of combat, if unit's HP is greater than 25%, deals damage to foe equals X percent of foe's attack as combat begins. If unit has weapon triangle advantage, or if unit's res is greater than foe's res, it's 40, otherwise it's 20. 20 is not great. 40 is pretty good though. Uh, activates only when, and, and so that's the, the standard disclaimer there. Grants, attack defense res plus five to unit during combat. Grants bonus to units attack defense res during combat equals 20% of units res at start of combat. So that's the visible and reduces the percentage of foes non-special. So we get 50% piercing. So we have, <laughs> we have pre-combat damage, then we have, <laughs> uh, th then we have piercing and in combat damage. 
that is that's already good. Like you're, you're looking at this and thinking, OK, this is cab version of cam, not quite as good as cam. But still, this is this is pretty decent for the cab line nation. Gray illusion. If unit initiates combat or foe's HP is greater than 75% at start of combat, grants attack defense res plus nine. That's already very nice. And if unit's res is greater than foe's res, you get foe cannot counterattack. So you've got a sweep effect there. If unit initiates combat after combat, so if they survive, inflicts the following status on foes with the highest speed within three spaces of target foe, excluding target through their next action. After start of turn skills trigger, action ends immediately. For foes who have not yet taken an action in summoner duels, instead of inflicting this effect, just ends their action immediately. So, <laughs> if this unit kills the unit that it's going after, then a unit within three spaces that has the highest speed, their action ends. And in summoner duels, that's huge. We have some questions here. And I mean, if you look at this like versus dual Sanaki, how much damage does this unit do? Uh, does this, if this unit can secure kills reliably, this is huge absolutely huge for summoner duels this is game wrecking like that is this this will end your day if you let this unit attack into you and this unit can get the kill that is something to ponder on um keep in mind really what they're thinking of the pre-combat damage of most of the time is like a a, a second attack so you can think of it like it's attacking and then they get their next attack in. So anyway, summoners, this is a crazy unit. <laughs> Occultist strike, so you get more pre-combat damage. Um, and then a sight, insight attack res, so you get more attack and res out of that. Like this is this is the kit that you want for this unit. I. I think the only other thing that you'd really want just to make this absolutely crazy is to make this an AOE unit, which is possible. Like you could make that happen, but I just keep in mind because of that sweep effect, there are a lot of things that this unit is not going to, uh, not going to take damage from. Um, I mean, one of them isn't the Byleths, but still, I there, <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Okay, so we normally don't go through this, but just, just to shine a little more light on this. A unit was killed, and then you can see on the next action, loses their turn. That's how it's going to work in Aether Rays or in any kind of PvE content. And the duo skill here is going to end the actions of everyone in a row. If you can get the other team lined up, I just imagine that. Like, that's four units just bang, done. What do you... I... <laughs> that is crazy. The, the use cases for this unit are... are wide. It just... It depends on how easily this unit can get kills. Let's look at the tier list. We, we have some things here. The first is just the far save tier, tier list. And I've you. got Murr over Byleth because Murr does more things in more modes. Understand, I still like Byleth in offense better just because that NCD is huge. Like that, that is a big, big deal. Uh, it, it's going to mean that a unit like Leon is not going to destroy you. <laughs> it's just going to take off a whole lot of damage. Um, the other thing worth noting is a lot of the saviors have high res, so you're really going to have to focus on that in order to use Leon. Um, as far as Ephraim goes, I, I know he's more of a near savior. I don't really rank near saviors because not a lot of people use them. Uh, but I mean, more folks are using them because of Winter Edel. But I do think as a far savior, this isn't a bad unit. And I, I, I have him below Corin, but I have him usable. And I, I mean,
mean, that that may be, let's, let's, let's test him before we get too far. That is kind of a guess as to how he's gonna function, but just I keep him in mind. Like he's an interesting unit. And uh, right now, blue is a nice color. Just ask any Zelgius fan. That Zelgius ranking right there, he really is that good. For our free-to-play-ish units, I, I've got this unit in tier one. I like Selena a lot. Um, that weapon is, I think we're going to find some uses for that. And, and the unit herself, like, Ranged calves have kind of had a renaissance lately, and I, I think she's a good unit. It's possible she's more like a tier two, but I, I, I'm a big fan. Um, last, whew, this was a hard one. I, as a pure nuke, I like Leon better than Cam as a pure nuke. Like as a unit, I still like Cam better because of all the things that that Cam does. But I. I I can't put him ahead of Sanaki yet. Uh, we have to see how he plays. I need to see how much damage he does. If you get in and he's just destroying everything, which sometimes these skills are, it, it's hard to predict how they're gonna interact because there are so many interactions right now. If, if, <laughs> if he does as well as we're thinking he might, this is a tier zero unit and possibly like everyone else drops down tier zero unit. So uh, be on the lookout just for how folks use this unit. Um, if you are a summoner duels nut, this is probably going to be a big one for you. I don't like the duo skill as much, but the, the way the weapon works, being able to take away an action, that is just huge. I mean, send this unit in first, take out a unit, <laughs> freeze another one and then everyone else descends uh, we're we might see more and more of that and I, I i think hit and run might be getting a big bump as a result so if you're liking the content i've got a link right here give it a click members you are amazing as always thank you so much for all of your help take care and schedule an appointment with your fail just real soon